If I have to draw a slightly more unusual animal, like a pangolin, I would normally use reference. I can maybe just about do a pangolin by heart, but I would, I would look at photographs. There's a pangolin here, I think on page 140. Different kinds, African pangolins and Chinese pangolins. And I can then maybe just do first a slightly realistic drawing, naturalistic, so that it would look like more like the real thing. The sad thing is that they're the most poached and most smuggled animal in the whole world because people believe in the powers of their scales. People think they have like a medical effect on people and they're also eaten. And it's just a very horrible, horrible thought. Big claws. For reference, I could go to the zoo and draw the animals there but the disadvantage is they move around a lot or they might not be there. So often you go to the zoo and all the wolves are asleep in the corner and you don't even see them. So photographs are more, more useful as reference. Some illustrators, it's really important to be very precise about the movements of animals and how they behave. From my kind of way of drawing picture books, it's, it's less important because my animals are not always behaving in a way that they would behave in, in nature and wouldn't look like that. So for me, if I illustrate a book like Ruffalo, I look at a fox once and then I sort of invent my own version. And what they do is they have a very, very long tongue, longer than their body. Imagine it, if you had a tongue longer than your body. Moving it on one stage, in this case I'm using a different pen, you can make it into something else and you can then give it different eyes for instance and make it look a lot more funny maybe give it a smile do they have ears don't know so that would already be slightly different often in picture books the animals become anthrop anthropomorphized that means they look like people so you could do a pangolin you could dress it or something you could be could be a pangolin in a nice little dress, still with the big claws to make it pangoliny. So I do that quite a lot, and many children's book illustrators do that, that they give the animals a human shape. So I start with a, with a drawing that's quite close to the to the reference picture in the in the book and quite close to nature, and then move it away to something like that, still with a very long tongue.